Hi, this is Gary Chan. I wanted to talk about a listing that's in the luxury um, residential housing space. And this is a house at 23, sorry, 2636 North Bosworth Avenue in Chicago. It is a six bed, seven bath, 5,800 square feet house listed at $2.55 million. And right now it is contingent, meaning someone's actually put an offer on it and they're going to see if it will um, close. You know, the seller will end up passing, transferring this property to the buyer. Well, this property actually has been on the market before and um, it was pending a sale, but then got kicked back onto the market. And that's sometimes what can happen with a higher end house at a higher price point. Um, there's a lot of money on the line and it can get very uh, strained, you know, it can be uh, kind of stressful for every all the parties at hand, buyer, seller, uh, real estate brokers, um, and things like that. But uh, in any case, uh, this is a brick house, okay, and it was actually built in 2017, so you will see the more modern looking style and fashion of the time right now um, and the big things that i would highlight here is that we are now using really like black grays and whites and uh, the good thing about the blacks is that i personally think it hides a lot more of dust dirt and things like that but you still have here like white countertops in the kitchen and white cabinets um, which you know they make these materials the kind of like a plastic laminate kind of material that's easy to wipe down so it's not too bad um, and then your countertops are probably quartz in this case which is a very fine stone compared to granite the uh, the pores are a lot smaller and so if for example someone ends up cutting food on this surface it's a much stronger stone that's not going to leave marks on the on the on this, the material. Actually, I think um, technically quartz is a mineral and not a stone for whatever that's worth. Um, here you have gray walls, black um, flooring. So again, a lot better at hiding dirt, dust, and things like that. And just gray, black, and white tones throughout. Sometimes what I see in some of these luxury houses is they will customize each room with different paints. And the problem with that is that if you get paint, if you get wall marks and you want to fix the, the walls, you either have to repaint the whole room or you have to store the paint somewhere. And a lot of people don't want to store their paints for the purposes of patching up the walls down the road. So it ends up being a very expensive um, repaint work. But if you uniformly paint all your rooms the same color, see here, this is a little bit of a darker, like a light brown uh, versus here being a gray. So you're going to end up with several different paints here, white ceilings, kind of a light brown, and then a gray. If you stick with fewer paint colors, you'll have... Um, less trouble paint matching down the road. And then we have a uh, rooftop deck here. And notice a very minimalistic, simplistic design. This looks like computer rendering. And um, a lot of times what I get asked is, is does a house come with the furniture? And no, it does not come with the furniture typically. Um, you can negotiate a deal to buy it separately from the house. And the other thing is you probably won't want to buy it with the furniture because if you do, you end up paying uh, property tax on the furniture, uh, sales tax on the furniture. It gets calculated into the title, the escrow, and all that stuff. However, I mean, at this kind of price point of $2.5 million, what are we talking about? Furniture that's $100,000 or less. So we're talking like less than 5% of the sticker price. Okay.
So what's good about newer homes and typically newer homes compete with older residential resale homes. What's good about new construction is you don't have to worry about bad plumbing or bad electrical. And you can say, well, I'm going to buy a house that's remodeled and that's fine and good, but there's no guarantee that within the next five to 10 years, you will end up start having plumbing problems. And it could be either on your property or it could be out on the street side. I would definitely still look at a street view on Google Maps and kind of see um, what the condition is. Um, if these construction, if the construction company that, or you know, the, the investor that did this, did their due diligence, they probably chose a street and area that is in relatively good condition because a lot of Chicago streets are got potholes and cracks and even when they repair them they go into disrepair within one to three years and it's just because of the extreme cold weather and the salt they put on the ground and things like that property taxes here forty two thousand two hundred sixty six dollars per year um, I would recommend going to cookcountypropertyinfo.com and it will give you the tax information. Um, now, Zillow can be accurate here in this case. It may not be accurate. Um, you can then also take a look to see if these owners are getting a senior home exemption, if they are getting um, taxed based on land, because they had just done recent construction or if they are getting a, um, a senior homeowner owner's exemption, a, um, you know, things like that. So, and I would recommend appealing every year in the Chicago area to keep your taxes down. Uh, monthly cost, keep in mind that Zillow and the property tax section here, oh no. I was going to show you uh, the principal interest here. They're calculating it based on a 20% down payment. And at this ticket price for a home, um, they may require you to put a 20% down payment. You may be able to get a 5% down payment with really good um, income and assets and you know, a good financial picture. Most people typically do a lower percent down if this is your second home or third home, the bank may want you to put a larger down payment, like 20% down. But interest rates are really good right now. They are at a historic all-time low, like in the last 100 years low. So that's good, and it puts it in an environment that's... Um, conducive to purchase, but also um, it's also pushed the real estate prices up. Um, you again see here property tax. I've seen this information wrong sometimes, so I would double check it and put it in this monthly cost calculator area. Homeowners insurance. I don't know if this is entirely accurate either. But at the end, final check, you can always call your insurance agent to get an estimate on what they would charge on the insurance. School ratings, 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10. Um, for a house at this caliber in terms of pricing, you may want to look into private schools or magnet schools or online schools or things of that nature. This house may be geared more towards um, 55 plus retired people or people with the kids have moved out, empty nesters. Um, and typically someone who is saved 2.5 or not saved, but they are earning their high income earner in let's say the 200,000 plus annual income bracket, they're 35, 40, plus years old and their kids are typically either in high school or college and so 
I would say the elementary school level is not as an important of a factor, but maybe the high school and then higher education, maybe. Walk score 88, mm, that's pretty good. Although the more walkable it is, the closer it is to maybe bars, restaurants, grocery stores, and things of that nature, which can be a good and bad thing. I mean, that means that your streets could be more busy with a lot of parking, like the parking is taken up on the weekends. And if it's a little bit less walkable, it may provide you more privacy so that not as many people are walking back and forth in front of your house. Um, so there's almost a pro and con to everything. Uh, the next thing I really like to do is look at a property on the map and see what the street view is like. Looks like there's uh, water puddling here. And the street looks a little bit faded, but there are no, well, there is a little crack here, but um, no significant cracks or potholes that I can see. And there is spaces for parking, at least when Google drove by this house. And you can say, I would say that the neighborhood looks reasonable. These trees are a little bit bigger, but there are no power lines running through here. Well, there is one right here. So here's one thing to think about. We're in a windy city in Chicago, and this electrical line can get hit with the trees. So you may get power outages maybe one or two times a year. Um, but you get a little bit of shading for your cars in the front and shading if you like to take dog walks. Um, the next thing I like to do is do a little spot crime. And check. That is not the address. So let's grab the address here and go into Spot Crime. I'm on an Android, but if you are on an Apple iPhone, you may be able to find a different app if you can't find this one. So I believe you were in an Ivy something neighborhood. Let's look and see. The name of this neighborhood is West DePaul, okay? And we can see here, so we just want to zoom into this. And usually I would say within a two block radius, I want to know what kind of crime there is. It, it looks relatively clean, but look at Diversity Parkway at the top in Ashland, which looks like a major road. We are one block, we're on Bodsworth, I believe, right? So, we are two blocks away from Ashland, and right here there was a theft, 500 and under. Um, now, keep in mind also that the crime in this map is only showing within the last three months. So, see this is September 24, theft, type, theft, date, and September 24. Right now we are in December, so three months. After a month, this crime will come off of this map. And you have crime here, theft, 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 motor vehicle theft, residence theft, street theft. Um, um, so, I mean, for a $2.5 million house, you know, it's something to think about. I think on Bosworth itself, you're not going to have too many problems. The obvious thing to do is to get a burglary alarm with motion sensors. If anyone goes through your house, the police are going to come. Burglars, they can do their thing in 10 minutes, and they got to be at your house. 
but for most higher end people, they keep most of their money in the bank or they keep it hidden in a good spot. And uh, most crimes statistically is, believe it or not, people that you know, friends, family, neighbor, uh, people you hire to do your housekeeping, your gardening, uh, handyman, maintenance people. Um, I find that typically people on the higher end luxury properties, you know, with high income earners, they are pretty generous with what they pay their housekeeping staff and their maintenance people and stuff. And, you know, I do hear a lot of good stories, people saying, hey, uh, yeah, I did housekeeping for these people and they pay me 25 an hour where I normally get minimum wage. And I, I did the four hour cleaning in two hours, you know, um, to leave people happy, especially at this type of neighborhood, you know, you're going to have less problems. Um, and that's just kind of my take on things. But um, anyway, this kind of wraps up. Oh, here, let's look at this. Zip code stats are the home values are going to increase 1.4% in the zip code. Zillow predicts home values will increase 6.8% in the next year. And who really knows if this is going to happen or if it's a guarantee? Uh, real estate's been trending up for since 2008 to 2011, since the Great Recession. Uh, we are in a very long run. Uh, if we're going to count from 2008, we're 12 years into a real estate cycle. And we are far past due for a, um, a recession or like a downturn in the real estate market. Um, if we don't account for that at all, uh, I think the government's been doing very well. Um, what the Federal Reserve has been doing really well in terms of using interest rates to control the cycle and delay this uh, kind of recessionary period. Um, the banks are, when they do have foreclosures, slowly putting out houses on back onto the market instead of just dumping them back out onto the market and then causing um, a great drop in housing prices. So I think things are more stable. Um, society has learned a lot from past recessions or depressions or you know economic downturns. So um, we may be running into a recessionary period, let's say two to four years from now, one third of mortgages are not being paid on because of the current COVID-19 situation. And um, so those houses may end up on foreclosure and it does take two to four years for that to kind of, those houses to be reclaimed back from the bank and then put back on the market. And then, then it'd be up to the bank what they're going to do, if they're going to put those back on the market right away or if they'll slowly put them back on the market. Chicago itself is um, one of the most underpriced real estate. I read an article stating Chicago is the only, at least in the study, the only city in North America to have underpriced real estate. I believe there are other areas, but for a major city, because studies typically cover major cities, that may be true. So um, those are a few other things to think about that you get good bang for your buck, especially for, um, you know, within a 15 minute drive of this location, I think you have quite a lot of amenities, restaurants, bars, shopping, grocery, um, schools, options for schools even, universities. Uh, jobs and things like that. So I guess um, hmm. that another one, another thing I want to comment on is I do typically see a lot of these luxury homes have like six bedrooms, seven bathrooms, you know, each bedroom is typically going to have its own private bathroom. And that seventh bathroom might be a guest bathroom for anyone that might come in your house and you don't want them to use your private bathrooms that's in a bedroom. And I'll, very commonly with the square footage, we're talking something between, just to give you a large range, 4,000 to 6,000 square feet, you know, ballpark. So um, 
some things to think about because the typical family of two parents, two children is four people. And yet you have these extra bedrooms that may or may not be used. So do you want an extra guest bedroom or maybe even two guest bedrooms? Um, what will you be using the bedrooms for? Maybe you could use the extra bedroom as a storage space to keep extra things that you don't um, use. You Maybe you could use it as like a painting studio or like an office space. So even though it's listed as a bedroom, it's actually an office space. Maybe the extra bedroom is one for him as an office space, one for her as an office space. Um, then you have two children who also get their own bedrooms. Husband and wife also get their own bedrooms. So there is where the six bedroom count works out. Or husband and wife stays in one room and then there's another room that is an exercise room. Listed as a bedroom but used as an exercise room. Um, in terms of extra amenities as well, I would think about what you in your lifestyle want. Some of these houses have exercise rooms. Sometimes there are extra garage spaces for more cars. Um, rooftop deck in this case is an extra amenity. Um, maybe you want a room with a ping pong or a billiards table, a recreational room where you have guests that come and you have parties at your house. With 2.5 million, you can definitely do a lot. Or you may want to go live a little farther out of the city where your money goes farther and you could have a larger estate or you could have more square footage in your house with even more options. Swimming pool, billiard room, ping pong room, bowling alley. You name it, you can have it. Um, it really is now at this point a matter of customization and what you want, what your options, um, what, what fits your lifestyle. And if you're busy and you work long hours, maybe you want to be closer to the city or maybe you can handle a commute. But now with COVID-19, a lot of people are working from home, you know, so you may want a larger home outside of the city. These are a lot of things to think about and consider, but um, I think I'll leave it at that for now. And uh, until the next video, you guys have a great day and see you again soon.